Here's your host, Alex Garrett. Ah, we are on day five of the 12 days of Christmas. Of course, Christmas starts on, uh, the 12 days starts on Christmas and runs through really Three Kings Day. And uh, Alex Garrett podcasting here. Thanks for joining us today. I've got a lot to say about uh, quite a few things. But firstly, I just want to say thank you to a couple of friends. Um, one, both totally unexpected Christmas happenings. Um, Hillary Kramer, one of the hosts I interact with and talk to. Uh, thank you for this beautiful Christmas Giants sweater. It's it's amazing. It's going to keep me warm and hopefully keep me geared up for a playoff run that continues for Big Blue. Avenida, my local diner, thank you for uh, the beautiful sweater from Nautica you had given me. Uh, and I really am praying for you guys during this time. And also, thanks to mom, dad, and uh, mom, dad, and my dad, and my father, pop, uh, all of you. For making Christmas a great special one, even amidst COVID, rituals were kept and uh, in the city and in Queens. It was great. St. Patrick's Day, and then we opened presents to home. It was special. So thanks for everybody so far for making that first day of Christmas and beyond very, very special. I've been reading into a psychologist named Nathaniel Brandon. Nathaniel is a very non-traditional psychologist. He talks about the consciousness he talks about how you can use the potential you have and to increase it and uh, to meet your needs. So how can you utilize your capacity, your potential to meet the needs of life, to get ahead in life, to keep going in life? That's a big question I'm wondering uh, right now. But you got to check them out. Nathaniel Brandon, the Nathaniel Brandon, B-R-A-N-D-E-N Institute. Really, I'm hoping to have someone from there soon enough um, because as a podcaster, as any kind of media, shouldn't we also have a consciousness within us to speak rightly on the air or on the podcast? It really woke me up to like, you know, sometimes I don't think about something I'm about to say or fact check it enough. I'll be honest about that. And it made me wondering, hey, how can I do a better job tapping into my consciousness for this podcast, Alex Garrett Podcasting? And one of the ways to do it is to just follow leads of stories that my friends send me or that I happen to pick up. And one of the stories has to do with an amputee for Christmas. Uh, Joe Sibilia, thank you for this reference here. But imagine getting a leg for Christmas. Not the leg lamb, not fragile, but an actual prosthetic leg because you were hurt in a motorcycle accident on July, in July and had lost your leg. That's the story of Justin Fernandez. He's 24. He's up in Toronto, eh? Uh, and guess what? He got the articulated bones of the leg he lost in a motorcycle accident. He decided to keep the limb as a symbol of the hardship he has overcome since that fateful day. And hopefully this leads to, looks like he has a prosthetic actually, but he got the leg that was severed and he's going to keep it in his room as a symbol. Now, where have I heard this before? Oh, I know. A Christmas carol. Tiny Tim, how was he at church? He was good as gold. He wanted people to see how the Lord made lame beggars walk. Or a lame walk. However the line went, Dickens wrote it better than I could ever articulate it. And so this man is channeling that energy of symbolic... uh, of symbolism. To get your severed leg is kind of a big deal. It's probably emotional for him to have that in his home right now. But symbolism obviously is a great reminder that he can work wonders on anybody and everybody. And so it's very cool that he got his own leg back 
uh, as a reminder. I think that's a good reminder of how he overcame. And now it's probably a reminder of how he adapts. So this Christmas, Justin Fernandez, who's 24, utilized the holiday to remind himself, hey, look where I've come from. Look how I've adapted to the situation. Adaptability really is a great Christmas gift. It's a gift from God, too. To be given that energy to adapt to whatever circumstance you might have. So kudos to Justin Fernandez of Toronto for wanting your leg back as a token of where you have come from. Hopefully I get you on my podcast soon. And I hope that I, it looks like you might be wearing a prosthetic. I got to verify that or not. But very cool. And the Prehistoria Natural History Center in downtown Toronto heeded the call for the leg. So congratulations on all around for making this Christmas a special one for Mr. Fernandez. Then there's another story. You know, last week I said Christmas is uh, broadband for Christmas for 500,000 New Yorkers thanks to Verizon. Well, how about this? How about this? We've got a new lawsuit that's trying to bring indoor dining back for businesses as a late Christmas gift and early New Year's gift. Kudos to the New York Merchants Alliance for suing Mayor de Blasio and Governor Andrew Cuomo, who said Santa's going to be good to him this year. Did you hear that? <laughs> he said Santa's going to be good to him. I laughed. I really did. But now we're getting serious in New York City. New Yorkers are getting serious. The Greater New York Merchants Alliance is saying indoor dining must resume. And they're suing them. Did you know, according to this lawsuit and research, only 1.4% of corona transmissions were to be stemming from indoor dining, while 70% or more, 74, originated with household gatherings. What data was Governor Cuomo talking about? We didn't even see the data. He just said, we got to close everything. He said, spoiling your New Year's Eve. Everything closes at 10. You can't do indoor dining. And to top it all off, of course, <laughs> you have to sit out in the cold and eat inside an outdoor dining thing. I don't. None of this makes sense here in New York City right now. Absolutely Jack Diddley squat. So the Merchant Alliance saying that stat, and then they say, employing emptying out eateries is filling up apartments and houses, contributing to coronavirus spikes. The suit continues. There is no science or subsection of the United States Constitution of the New York Constitution that supports this dystopian edict. I had mentioned early on when ACB, Amy Coney Barrett, was a pointed to replace the late Ruth Ginsburg, with a court that is somewhat lopsided and conservative, a suit like that could get there. And I hope more file suits. I hope that Christmas can come late for these dining uh, entities, for these restaurants, to finally get their doors open, to finally have indoor at more than 50% capacity. Long Island, I was there at Port Jefferson on Sunday with my few friends, Monica and uh, Steve. And let me tell you... <laughs> They were indoor dining. It was a relief. It felt normal, people. Uh, we went to St. Patrick's, Dad and I, on Christmas Day. That was normal for us. We didn't let the COVID spike totally ruin Christmas weekend. Now, for those who didn't go to a house out of precaution, great. I applaud you for that. Because we do know households are the spread right now. We can't afford it. We just cannot afford to have people gathering in a very tight quarter, like a restaurant or a bar. And I just hope that, speaking of consciousness, that our leaders finally wake up, wake the F up, if you will, and say, you know what? These guys are right. 
Lawsuits have won by, work, by the way. When they sue Cuomo about the indoor dining to begin with, he then opened it up. So lawsuits are right. New York Hospitality Alliance, Merchant Alliance. There are organizations fighting for the worker, fighting for the business owner, fighting for the restaurateur, which is what we need. <laughs> we need people fighting for them or they will not survive. I think as glum as the spread increasing and in like another strain, there's also this idea that it's glum for business owners who just want their businesses back. And then everybody's like, well, why are you yelling at the health expect inspector? You mean, why are you yelling at the health inspector that is outdoor dining or indoor dining with no mask with Governor Newsom? You see Governor Cuomo out and about. He went away to family for Thanksgiving. I'm not sure about Christmas. But these guys have to be held accountable. How many times do we have to say it? We have to hold accountable that Mitch McConnell voted down the $2,000 provision for Americans. Again, who is the stimulus for? Stimulus for us? Stimulus for you? Or stimulus for like foreign entity coffers? It's disgusting. It's absolutely disgusting. Uh, what are we going to do, guys? We're going to pray. We're going to hope that these lawsuits do get somewhere further than a desk of a judge. We're going to pray that these business owners can resume naturally, can help people live their lives naturally, can disrupt the household gathering phenomena that's going on right now, maybe more so than ever. A 1.4 transmission rate in an indoor dining setting. And nobody bats an eye that he shut it down. Nobody in favor of Cuomo, I should say. When to really like Cuomo, you have to hold him accountable. To really show support for Cuomo, you got to point him out when he's wrong. And he's wrong. He's been wrong on a lot of things. He's been wrong sending COVID patients back to the nursing home. Positive. It's just so bad. But I am very, very eager that nearing the end of 2020, we see alliances, forming alliances to fight these government restrictions. It's a great Christmas gift. And the best, best gift will be seeing go through to finality to where indoor dining can be normalized. New York City isn't meant to shut down. Our country is not meant to be shut down forever. These restrictions are showing that there are folks out there that want to shut down. And there are also lawsuits that are showing we the people, Americans, who get $600 of the $900 billion package, that's frustrating enough. We're seeing them say, you know what? Let's just fix this. Let's sue these leaders. Let's test the Constitution in the court. It's exactly what I hoped would happen when I saw ACB confirm, be confirmed. Let's see the constitutionality of these restrictions. Governor Cuomo, you claim you know the Constitution? Do you really, though? We're going to see. The alliance here, the Merchant Alliance, New York Merchants Alliance, Greater New York, says we got to sue. Says it's time. Says we're fed up. If I were them, I'd be fed up, too. As a regular participant, I'm fed up. As someone who can jump on a mic and be able to podcast, I'm fed up. Why aren't you some New Yorkers out there? Ask yourself, why aren't you fed up? Why are you defending Cuomo? Because if you don't, you're afraid you're going to lose friends. F that. Lose friends over this guy. Lose friends over someone who's really putting down edicts with no data, no proof. Who's putting down the idea that uh, putting away the uh, COVID patients in the nursing home again to get them all sick. I don't think he means to, but I think there's some, I, I don't want to think he's malicious, but I also don't think he's exactly thinking. I don't think he's using his consciousness. So let's stop defending leaders to keep a friendship. Start holding these leaders accountable to respect yourself. Firstly, what I mean by that is if you respect yourself, that's a great Christmas gift. 
if you respect yourself enough to say, I'm not going to go along with what they say just because I want to keep a friend, you'll find better friends. You've got to focus on what you care about the most. And I have to believe for a lot of Americans, it's their fellow neighbor. It's those fellow business owners. It's the George Baileys. And we have to be there for the George Baileys right now that are struggling, that's not having a wonderful life in Bedford Falls or wherever they might be. A wonderful life could be happening thanks to the New York Merchants Alliance, not thanks to Governor Cuomo. Oh, you know, Santa's been going to me. Who cares? Were you good to the people in New York? I don't think so. Have a hard time believing that. So kudos to Justin Fernandez, 24 of of uh, Toronto for preserving his leg as a reminder, as a symbol. Dickens would be proud. Dad told me Dickens was an American. Did you know that? I I love the book so much, but I never really researched Charles Dickens. <laughs> I like his work, though. He was an American writing in England. How about that? And I will say that to come to this microphone with a clear head every day, whether you're a podcast or a radio host, is so important. To consciously feel what you're saying and consciously think, is this going to be beneficial to the listener to know these stories? And if it isn't, cutting room floor. But if it is, pound it home. Pound it home that we are tired. That lawsuits will be happening, Governor Cuomo, Mayor de Blasio. And for God help us, they get heard, they get sent further, and we just keep going. Uh, One day at a time. Don't let these leaders and the media and people that seem to be frustrated and wanted to friend those against them, don't let them intimidate you. 2021, lose that friend who constantly gives you hell about disagreeing with Cuomo. 2021, lose that friend who won't let you live in peace with your thoughts. There's better people out there. And my God, you know, someone said today in the meme, 2020 is like, uh, 2021 is like saying, 2021 but we will make sure 2021 is the year 2020 lost and I'm going to make sure of it on this podcast I hope you do too whatever medium you write blog podcasting however else make sure 2020 lost in 2021 on that note stay peaceful follow that star in the heaven that we talk about on Christmas still follow a days after Christmas Because if you follow his star, that's his path for you, whatever it might be. God bless you. Have a blessed rest of the Christmas season. And we will come back. And 2020 will have lost in 2021. Take care.